In episode EX24 of Bullet Heaven, we took a look at the Taito DLC for Darius Burst CS. Of the three games represented, one specific pack really blew me away with its insanely good music and neat mechanics applied to the Darius Burst CS formula. Because of this DLC, I became very acutely aware of Taito's 3D scaling style shooter, Night Striker, and I was pretty impressed with what I saw and heard having heard nothing of the game up until that point. I knew what needed to be done. Night Striker originally saw release to arcades in 1989, with its first home version appearing on the Sega Mega CD in Japan from Taito in a scaled-back form. It would later see release to the PlayStation in 1995 as a much closer version to the arcade original by Ving. Finally, in 1996, Ving also released Night Striker to the Sega Saturn as Night Striker S. Night Striker S adds new features to the old versions of the game, making it more or less the definitive version. Let's take a closer look. As far as 3D scaling shooters go, Night Striker S is a pretty pure example of what you'd expect from such a game. Players blast their way through Night Striker in a non-linear six-stage set. Ground and air-based enemies will appear as players barrel through each stage, and they must be dealt with using your main weapon. Each stage is also capped off with a timed boss fight before the next round. The controls are very, very simple. The D-pad moves the player's car, known as the Intergray, around the screen, and all face buttons do just one thing, shoot. There are both rapid and single shot inputs mapped to the Saturn Pad's main face buttons. Believe it or not, that's completely it. The controls are actually so simple that we had to double check whether or not anything was cut from the arcade version. But no! Even the arcade cabinet had just a stick and a single shot button. Night Striker S also supports the Sega Saturn Mission Stick, which emulates the feel of the arcade cabinet nicely. Movement is very quick in Night Striker, maybe even a little too quick if we're honest. There will likely be a bit of acclimation required to get used to the movement speed of your sweet flying ride. Firing at enemies will also take a bit of getting used to, but becomes natural very quickly. Ground and air-based enemies will also fire back though. Normal enemy shots will turn red when they are in danger close proximity to the intergray. Missiles are also a huge threat, as they are not only very quick, but home in on the player. If a player ends up getting hit by anything though, it's no problem, at least at first. The intergray has a handy shield that will absorb enemy hits and collisions with static emplacements. So long as the shield exists, the player is safe from becoming a long trail of debris. Only when the shield is totally gone will players be vulnerable to enemy fire and collision, which will finally kill them. The simple gameplay setup and straightforward nature of Night Striker S might seem as if the game is pretty mindless, and to an extent, it actually kind of is. But there are still a few neat twists here as well. Between stages, players can choose between two stages as their path branches off, Darius style. Each stage is different from one another, and with multiple endings, which, by the way, are entirely in English despite a Japan-only console release, it makes for a very dynamic gameplay style with quite a bit of replay. There are even different support units and player forms to discover as well. Night Striker S in specific also has a good amount of extra gameplay in addition to the huge amount of arcade stages, by way of a neat exclusive mode. The extra game feature is a unique but linear six-stage set that challenges players with super hard levels found nowhere else. And of course, all the while, Night Striker S features a scoring system that anyone can have fun with. The main scoring mechanics in Night Striker S are extremely simple and fairly rudimentary. This allows for anyone to challenge the game for a high score without having to deal with giant breakable chains or complicated actions or meddling. Simple and easy is the name of the game here. Enemy destruction will make up the vast majority of a player's score in Night Striker S. Knowing which enemies will appear where will definitely help, as will coming to grips with the twitchy aiming that the over-sharp controls boast. Players will also gain a sizable score through getting through as much of the game as possible. The longer the distance traveled by the intergray, the more points will be scored. The numbers are constantly climbing as the game continues, to the point that a player will get a score of almost 90,000 points before the game even technically starts. So obviously, the further a player can get without continuing, the better. The end of each stage has the potential for some decent bonuses as well. For each shield in the stock, players are awarded with 100,000 points, so to have the highest amount of shield power at stage end, the better. In addition, a boss timer bonus is also awarded based on how high the number in the boss counter is. Once again, this number is multiplied by 100,000. The score challenge of Night Striker in general comes from the actual challenge of the game. Especially in stages with a lot of barriers and physical obstacles, losing a ton of shield power will definitely make things pretty rough when it comes to scoring high. And that's totally all there is to it. The scoring and gameplay might be simple, but that's kind of the beauty behind Night Striker in general. It's a game that someone could really just kind of relax to if all they wanted to do is blow some stuff up with a sweet car.
I think I have to be honest here. The main reason I became a little on the obsessed side of things when it came to Night Striker in general was the sick, sick presentation that it sports. This is the first scaling 3D shooter we've taken a look at on Bullet Heaven, and while it has all the hallmarks of Sega's Super Scaler series, a series that includes Thunderblade, Afterburner, and Galaxy Force 2. The thing that put Taito's scaling game up over the top is simple. They have Zuntata. More on that in a sec. Visually, Night Striker would have been really impressive to play in 1989. There are a ton of elements scaling into the foreground. Contextual effects like rooster tails on water as players race over it, and super smooth winding and dipping road effects that make the road-specific stages more believable. To get the game to look and feel as arcade perfect as possible though, the frame rate is capped at 30 frames per second. But the good news is that the game never wavers and runs flawlessly to the very end, no matter how crowded things get. The details in all of the 2D elements in Night Striker are also pretty fantastic. Even when scaled back, these sprites look pretty clear. Debris from felled enemies will bounce around. The intergrade morphs from Roadster to Hovercraft and back with totally different sprites, complete with flashing lights and glowing exhaust. Background shifts laterally when moving side to side. It all looks pretty sweet, if you ask us. Then there's the sound. Night Striker S doesn't really mess with a good thing. All of the original sound effects from the arcade game are present here, and while the sampling is a little washed out, they work really well. You can definitely tell this is a title game with the sort of effects that are used from game start to shots, explosions, and that extra telling boss alert. Even the voice samples work really well here. But then there's the music, made by Taito's in-house group Zuntata. Night Striker has the kind of OST that really means business. There are some super slick pieces here, most of which are impeccable. Again, the sampling is a little washed out and harsh, but they are exactly the same tunes as those in the arcade original. And believe it or not, for the time of its release, I would be so bold as to say that any track arrangements wouldn't have done these original ones justice. The arranged tracks in Darius Burst yes were mint though. Rounding out the presentation, a Sega Saturn exclusive CG movie has been added to the mix, giving players a look at the Intergray in all of its 3D glory, with a weak arranged piece to accompany it. Looks like we were right. Meanwhile, a clean, simple UI and an all-English story from beginning to end makes this game very import-friendly. So just how does Night Striker S stack up? Let's take a look. Night Striker S's controls are sharp, maybe a little too sharp. Players will definitely need to get used to how fast their ship whips around the screen. It becomes very manageable though. Night Striker S has a very accommodating challenge factor that makes for a very approachable game. Extra difficulty settings also exist in the options menu for players that want a little more bite. Night Striker S not only has a plethora of stages on a branching Darius style matrix, but also an exclusive Saturn only mode. The simple scoring system also allows for some decent score chasing. While the visuals in Night Striker S are pretty dated, they're also very detailed as well. This version is definitely the best home version available, but while everything looks great, the frame rate is capped at 30 frames per second. The sound is where Night Striker S really shines. A masterful OST by Zuntata sets the stage with some of the best composed tunes we've ever heard. There are no arranged game tracks though, and as great as they are, the sampling for the effects and music are a little on the washed out side. There isn't a lot to say about the ingenuity of Night Striker. It's an extremely basic game that doesn't do much to innovate past what Sega had already been doing before with its Super Scaler series. But the Darius style stage progression is still super cool, and the extra features in the S version make the Sega Saturn version the one to get. This was a game that I gotta say was one that was worth the wait. Everything came together super well here, and with such an approachable gameplay style, difficulty, and awesome presentation, this is one title game that fans should not be without. Especially with its exclusive extras, Night Striker S gets a 4.25 out of 5. <laughs> Night Striker S isn't terribly expensive these days, but it's much higher than you'd expect. The S version goes for around about 100 bucks in complete condition on a good day, mostly because the Sega Saturn seems to be riding a crazy popularity roller coaster these days. Spineless versions can go cheaper though. But if you have a Mega CD or PlayStation, you're set. Even though it doesn't offer as many extras, the PlayStation version should play just as well, and it can be had for as little as 25 bucks. Meanwhile, Mega CD copies clock in at about 40 bucks, which is probably worth it for the soundtrack alone. Anyway you slice it, this is one game you need in your collection if you like scaling shooters.
This review is produced with a copy of the game purchased pre-owned at auction. The opinions expressed are our own and are not paid for by the developer or publisher in any way.